be vegan, make peace, do good deeds, heaven Godspeed. With profound, humble gratitude and love to all venerated, enlightened masters, we bow to the Almighty in soulful gratefulness for gifting us with their holy, blessed presence. May all beings be awakened by the Divine Grace. Part 2 of 4 etc. I don't have anything. My cat is very little thing. Uh, I don't have uh, envelope. <laughs> the other nuns, monk already, New Year already have. This did not have. Doesn't matter New Year or not. We can always offer to the monks, yeah? I offer all the time when I see them, not just here. I come here. Go, Bao Yo. Okay? There, thank you. Go, yeah. Thank you. 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 She already has, but I say I have one left extra, so for her to maybe some other nuns or monks need in Vietnam. Vietnam can always use, yeah. Monks and nuns anywhere can always use some money, okay? Even if they don't use for themselves, they can always offer to other monks and nuns. Uh, they more poor, yeah? You have, you okay? Good, good, good. Thank you so much. Well, a lot of people, that's good. <laughs> that means you like to practice. I, the hair is a trouble. I want to cut my hair, shave it like them. Convenient, but cannot. And the woman cannot. Oh, also this for you. Uh, drink, okay? Beer, cola. <laughs> Juice. All together, okay? I give it from my kitchen, and they bring me some time, one or two, you know? I don't drink, I save it, one side. And today, so I have a lot. Okay. I don't have any. <laughs> Ming Tian, okay? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Uh, together, in case. Taiwan, I'm going to go. Taiwan, I'm going to go. Taiwan, I'm going to go. If you don't eat at night, the stomach is not comfortable. Okay, 
懂不懂？然后饿的啊，就可以呃泡一泡，喝一喝 ，OK， 给那个肚子那个酸呢、啊、融化掉 ，OK， 嗯，就这样子了啊。这是我自己本人有一些，本人煮饭有时候给，然后我生下来。啊，本人有一些，因为对不起，不是不是不是不尊重，我偶尔喜欢那些点心，那些我不能给很多，偶尔给一次而已，偶尔给他们一次，这些没有动过，啊，这个没动过性的才会供养。OK， 万一啦，万一晚上我是下午了不想吃了啊，然后就喝一喝啊，保护肚子了。我们不是不受戒，就是有时候肚子的胃酸太多了。呃，有时候老了，年轻的不一样，老了他不适应，肚子酸啊、痛啊，就会消啊，在里面会消，不舒服，要保养身体才能修行。佛菩萨会会原谅的，没事。我们修行观音法，多打坐一点就洗掉，没事。我们没做什么坏的 ，OK 哈，呀，啊，因为当和尚不容易啊。因为你们都在外面走，跑来跑去啊，赚钱了、啊，就没有想到当和尚不一样。OK， 不能赚钱了、啊，懂不懂？然后有时候不好意思去问人家，不好意思去问人家，肚子痛又不能去厨房说，哎呦，我要喝东西，要吃东西。我们是不不禁止了，就怕他们害羞不去。<笑>所以身边我有一些的在供养啊，没有多少了，就是我山东没有很多。嗯，有什么都带来了<笑> ，OK， 多谢多谢收容，谢谢，<笑>一点点，万一需要的时候啊、哦，放在一个地方，大家和尚都知道啊，需要就来拿呢，哎，随时都那个机机都有热水嘛，是吗？是，你们都知道哪里有热水吗？如果不知道，就叫他们一起去看好吗？然后热水泡一泡啊。不然的话，喜欢喝热水，也是来那边呐、啊，喝热水。嗯，有时候不舒服，不想喝冷水嘛。OK， 我们不是要酒，不是刁难了，就是身体嘛，它有时候不听话。OK， 那就不要那么严格。OK， 修行要紧，修行要紧，多打坐，多布施，布施法了。嗯，多想那个天上啊，佛上，就重要紧。不是说这一点东西，就那么，那么那么很很了不起的事情啊！啊，哎呀 ，OK， 我们老身体不一样，像我知道我老了不一样，身体他他有时候，我说业障我不知道了。如果一个人哈、啊、没有做什么，没人的，好久没有出去看什么同修之人的话，就就没有那样这么复杂的，奇怪的，都是奇怪的，怪病怪病啊！你说什么？业障干净，你怎么知道？哦，我有经验，有经验啊，嗯，看到多人就这样了，嗯，啊、对，会会被被影响，是吧？啊、是，嗯，所以一个人修行，一个人这样躲起来修行是最有福报的一个人，<笑> y e a h o、okay, k 梁延庆来了，<笑>啊。我这样做，大家看得到。Okay, I read to you about why we practice Guan Yin method. Okay? Yeah? Yes. That's all. <laughs> we should really thank the past masters, monks, and nuns, and scholars who have taken time to. Record the Buddha's teaching after the Master's Nirvana, and also for the past and present persons, lay or monks or nuns who have really dedicated themselves, sacrificed their time and precious health, or under any difficult situation, to translate this, so that I can read it to you. And we have to thank them, and may they be blessed forever. By all the Buddhas, past, present, and future, may their merit be immense. May they be liberated forever. Thank you.
according to Buddhism and the believer and the tradition, when you read sutra and all that, you have to put on incense, flower, you know, and bow to the sutra first and thank all the Buddhas and Bodhisattva in ten direction, all respectfully, before you read it, okay? And then you cover the sutra also with silk or, you know, beautiful cloth, and I just make it more popular, yeah, more easy, simple. And I apologize to all the Buddha. I say, if I've done something wrong, according to the tradition, my heart is full of respect. It's just that I cannot always do that. So please, all the sin, whatever I've done wrong, is all on me. At least other people, they hear the names of the Buddha, according to the Sutta, they will get benefit. Yes. Ananda. I just uh, cut the upper, okay? That is, uh, upper one is no need to read to you today. Maybe another day is also very complicated. This is more like a more intellectual uh, argument. Yeah? Okay. So now, Ananda and the great assembly gained wisdom and awareness. There was perfectly penetrating and free of doubt and delusion. Or at the same time, I mean, the Buddha has told them something before that, before this sentence. Therefore, they feel satisfied and enlightened, more enlightened. So, or at the same time, they place their palms together, bow at the Buddha's feet, and he said to the Buddha, Today, our bodies and minds are illumined and we are happily free from obstruction. Just today, just part of it, <laughs> not all obstruction. We have understood the meaning of the ending of the six and the one. Still, we have not yet gone through to fundamental, perfect penetration. World honor one, we who have floated and floundered our way through eon after eon, homeless and orphaned, had no idea. We never imagined that we could meet with the Buddha in such a close relationship. We are like lost infants who have suddenly found their compassionate mother. Because of this, we accomplish the way in this assembly, yet the secret words which we received are the same as our basic enlightenment, and so it is the same as if we hadn't even heard them. What he means by that? Okay, the secret words, probably the Buddha at that time gave them the five holy names, yeah? So it's called the secret words. For us it's secret, so we cannot tell other people, huh? All right. Now, probably that day, the Buddha finally gave them this secret mantra, yeah? And teach them the Kuan Yin method. But because at that time, these monks were already under Buddha for a while, and they have somehow benefited from the Buddha's light and enlightenment. Therefore, even when the Buddha gave them final, the five, uh, you know, secret words and initiation, they did not feel much different. That's why they say it's the same as if we have been already, you know, feeling or seeing all this time, basic enlightenment. Therefore, it's like as we have not heard them complaining. <laughs> Uh, we only wish the greatly compassionate one, meaning the Buddha, will bestow upon us the profound secret as the thirst come one's final instruction. They want more enlightening uh, explanation from the Buddha. After saying this, he prostrated himself, Ananda, withdrew and held himself ready for the secret opportunity as he awaited the Buddha's hidden transmission. Ah, 
he still think Buddha still hide something. <laughs> He's asking for more. Yes. So then, the world honor one told all those in the assembly who were great bodhisattvas and great arhats, their outflows extinguished, mean they have no more this all kind of desire or nonsense thinking or anything that is make themselves uh, lowly or obstructed themselves to the great way. I mean they're already purified, yeah, to the absolute. They are heart, they are bodhisattva, saint, great saint already. That means when they say no outflow, meaning nothing, they all concentrate inside now, they are within themselves. They are not distracted by outer uh, alluring uh, worldly scenery around them or anybody at all. Nothing can, can pull them outward anymore. That's, so that means no more outflows, no more thought, no more sin, no more karma, no more thinking of anything that is not in the proper spiritual dimension. Yeah? So no outflows, that's what it means. It's difficult to translate, of course they translate it like that, but that's what I understood. So then the world honored one, I mean the Buddha, you know already, right? World honored one, mean Buddha, yes. I mean the whole world should honor him, not that they do, not that they did, just that they should. Meaning that he's the world most honorable being at that time, and no one else surpassed him. Okay, just like world class teacher, <laughs> Buddha. <laughs> now, then the world honored one told all those in the assembly who were great bodhisattvas, mean saints, yeah, and arhats. Arhat is a little lower than Bodhisattva, okay? Just one step lower, like four level and then fifth level, okay? Their outflows extinguished. He says thus, All of you Bodhisattvas and Arhat who are born from within my Dharma and have attained the stage beyond learning, I now ask you, the Buddha asked, when you first brought forth your resolve and became enlightened to the eighteen realms. Which one of these brought perfect penetration? Through which expedient did you enter Samadhi?" Okay, the Buddha had taught them different methods, or maybe they have just been enlightened by themselves through their own uh, uh, good karmic spiritually from the past life, or through to their sharp faculty in that lifetime or because the Buddha's blessing. So each one of the monks at that time, Buddha did not teach them immediately the ultimate method. Buddha did not teach them the Kuaning method until that day, I guess. Maybe that's why he's explaining to them why you have to practice this one now, the Kuaning method, that day. That's why it come about here now, okay? So the Buddha asked them the assembly of the monkhood who always has been following him a long time, or years or months, uh, which method has brought you enlightenment, you know, to begin with. So one by one, they will tell the Buddha now, okay? Yes. Not all Kuaning method, okay? Actually, when the Buddha was alive, he taught uh, quite a few methods, okay? And when Patanjali, one of the great Indian uh, master, also taught his disciples quite different methods, okay? Oh, a lot of them, mm, a lot of them. Mm. But we don't need all that. It's too confusing for you, and it's not so a uh, guarantee. <laughs> it's not so easy for busy life like today. And also because nowadays we are very, very much contaminated by so many things and so distracted. Therefore, running methods is easier for all of you. Hmm? And at that time, even at that time, the Buddha will say the same. Okay? Now I will read on and you will know what I'm saying. Huh? The Kuaning method I mentioned sometimes before already, like in Lotus Sutra, Buddha also say that, and other Sutra also. Huh? 
And I say also in other religious sutra, they also mention here and there. I just say quickly when I go lecture. Yeah. But this is a more detail. Okay? One by one. I could tell you a word. And the Buddha already said that. Okay? So I'm going just to read it to you. <laughs> it's more authoritative from the Buddha. You know, the Buddha, he took 250 plus precepts. He don't tell lie. Okay? It's written black and white. He would not teach you for what? He went out and begged for one meal per day. What does he want from you or anybody at that time? Hmm? So what the Buddha said should be true. Okay, huh? Yeah. All right. Now, one of the bhikkhu, meaning one of the high monk. Bhikkhu uh, is a monk. Bhikkhuni is a nun. Understand that? Uh, Bichu is the name, Sanskrit name for fully uh, precepted monk. Đáng bài tua chê lưu. Đáng bài ưu sư hả? Đây. 250. Or more or less. Maybe some extra. <laughs> or some less. Because later on the Buddha said to Ananda, after his nirvana, some monks could relieve some of the small precepts. For example, you don't take a bath, more than once every two weeks. Well, Buddha say for such a precept you can overlook because in some area too hot, but also a lot of water is okay. The reason that precept was there when Buddha was there, because they assembled together and so many monks, and at that time we don't have tap. You complain about water here, but you should know if you live with the Buddha at that time, you probably can drink only every two, three days. <laughs> you can take a bath only every two weeks. Too many, you know, and they don't have enough facility. So, of course, bath once every two weeks is okay. Ah, oh, the Buddha don't know. He didn't even have to give me that precept. I don't have time to <laughs> take a bath <laughs> so often. You understand? Uh, if it's too bad, I just wipe, okay? Wipe myself, change clothes. For example, like that, yeah? Okay. Or maybe eat once a, a day only before noon, yes? But the Buddha said, can relax. If you have to travel and you don't have uh, it, the food on time, then you may take a food after that, for example, like that. Because if every monk go out begging all day, <laughs> instead of a one time a day, how do they have time to listen to the Buddha teaching? How do they have time to meditate? You understand that? Okay. At that time, it's different. The Buddha knew that. So he said, after his nirvana, some precept can be relaxed. It's like that. Okay, huh? But I'm not going to go further on precepts, since you are no monks. And these are reverends, they know already. Huh? Okay. If you're not monks and nun, you're not allowed to see the precepts. Actually, you should not know about it. Okay? Maybe you know and then you don't keep it, it's bad for you, but your conscience already know it, and you don't keep it, you feel bad. Maybe you look down upon it, just say, wow, what nonsense, yeah? And then you have bad karma, do you understand? That is why only when you determine to leave home, leave the world in order to be a monk, and then, then maybe you're worth it to know about it. Then at that time, your mind is somehow already fixed on this idea, and then you will just long to know the precept, how to be a monk. You will not mm, think negative or anything. All right, so one of the bhikkhu, the monk, said to the Buddha, uh, he and the other five bhikkhus arose from his seat, bowed at the Buddha's feet and said to the Buddha, when five of them practiced the same method, I guess, so all five of them rose up first and told the Buddha what kind of method they did practice first, you know, to get some enlightenment. So uh, this bhikkhu name is Kaundinya. It don't matter, okay? The Kaundinya. <laughs> the Sanskrit name, when it's translated into English, is already not very correct. And my accent makes it worse. So it doesn't matter. One of <laughs> five bhikkhus, and the first one, probably the leader of the group, with others of the five bhikkhus, arose from his seat 
I told something in between, you know, instead of just read it. Oh, you want me to read it on? Just, no, 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 the Buddha says something and then Ananda answered, what? you want that? No, I have to explain sometime. Maybe I don't have to, but <laughs> I just do. <laughs> Maybe you know everything already, right? You love it? Yes. You love my calendar, right? <laughs> the calendar. <laughs> okay, here come your calendar, yeah. And extra, yeah. So they rose. Kondinya rose from his seat with the other five bhikkhu, bow at the Buddha's feet, a tradition, tradition in India, okay? When you want to pay respect or when you want to talk, you first stand up, or if you already stand up, you bow to the teacher's feet, yeah, your master's feet, and with respect, yeah? And then you talk. Or when you come first, you, when you first see the Buddha, you come in his house, for example, see the Buddha, you bow to him as the feet. Yeah, touch the feet of the Buddha, put on your forehead like that. It's Indian tradition to pay utmost respect. Okay, that's all. all right. So now, and he said to the Buddha, when I was in the deer park, the deer park is uh, when uh, the Buddha also stayed there some time before and preach some Dharma, some teaching there, okay? And they were there, the five monks were there. Mm. Uh, when I was in the deer park and the pheasant garden, these are all in, uh, you know, <laughs> India or Nepal, huh? not here. I observed the thirst come one immediately after his accomplishment of the way, meaning when the Buddha first came out of the enlightenment, yeah, the first uh, ever time, after practicing for six years, and then after sitting under the Bodhi tree, no eat, no drink for forty plus days, and he became enlightened. Then he arose out of the Bodhi tree, and he wandered around. Maybe he went to Deer Park and Pheasant Garden. And that's where he met these five, the first five. Actually, the story of these five Bishu, I probably told you before already, so I don't want to mention here, okay? They are the first one who get uh, the Buddha's enlightening talk, yeah? When the Buddha preached the Four Noble Truths, yeah. Anyway, okay, we, we have to cut some, otherwise my calendar become <laughs> two, three years comprised together. <laughs> Not just to the end of this year, <laughs> but in the end of many other years, 2020, 2021, 22, 23. <laughs> and if I haven't told you about these first bhikkhus under the Buddha's teaching, then I will probably remember it. Or you remind me, then I will tell you in another time, okay? It's not much to, to us right now, it's not very important. So it's just that important that they were the first one and they the first rise up and told the Buddha which method they were practicing, okay? So they say that um, the thirst come one immediately after his enlightenment, accomplishment of the way, meaning he just got the complete enlightenment that day, or maybe just a few days ago. And then upon hearing the Buddha's voice, I understood the Four Noble Truths. You know? Mm. What is the Four Noble Truths? Anybody know? Except the monks. I told already, didn't listen, forgot. What is the Four Noble Truths? What's the First Noble Truth? Ah, yeah, all of you have it. I don't even need to tell you. We all have. What is? First one? I give you my cup. The Dharma? Oh, no. That's not the Four Noble Truth. That's the only truth. <laughs> okay. Birth? Old oh, age? Sickness? Yeah? Death. Okay. <laughs> That's the Four Truths that nobody can escape. Okay? Right. Remember now? Yes. I keep my cup. Thank you. <laughs> I how? <laughs> it's good that I didn't lose my cup. 
I like makeup. <laughs> I'm very attached to makeup. <laughs> the yellow will look good. <laughs> okay, thank you for trying to reserve the cup for me. Very good of you. So, when he, this uh, Bishu, Kaudinya, heard the Buddha's voice, he understood the Four Noble Truths. The Buddha asked us, Bichus, to speak. I was the first to understand, and the thirst come one certified me and named me as Nata. His wonderful sound was both secret and all-pervasive. It was through sound that I became an Arhat. Okay, so when the Buddha talked, he was the first one who understood. When the Buddha first preached the Four Noble Truths to these first five people, first disciples, he understood immediately. So he thinks it's because of the sound of the Buddha voice that make him enlightened. Not because of the sound, it is the Buddha sound, it's different, yeah? A complete, all pervasive Buddha sound. His sound, that's why he said, his sound is, is not a normal sound, like me talking to you, you need a microphone, and you don't even understand. Many times I keep asking you, what did I just say? <laughs> Something about the Qing dynasty. Huh? <laughs> or oh, the world when you were not born, something, history. Okay. That's why I told you, don't listen to gossip, because even you stand here, sitting right in front of me, I use microphone, and even you understand English, you also did not <laughs> hear nothing. I don't know where are your mind, <laughs> but you did not. Not all of you understood. I don't know, what are you listening? What are you listening? Ah. Listen to you, Master! <laughs> yeah, that's what you say! <laughs> you did not listen to me! I don't know, you're thinking a boyfriend in Africa! <laughs> New boyfriend! Or maybe would-be, will-be boyfriend, future boyfriend! Uh, future wife, I don't know! Because I asked you today also, you did not say answer correctly. <laughs> I wonder. <laughs> That's why I said to you, huh? Don't listen to people talk, especially negative things about other people. Hmm? Even if you hear it, even with your own ears or see with your own eyes, things are not the way it looks like or seems like, yeah? It could be wrong. You could be wrong. Some criminals, so-called criminals, went to prison for nothing because a witness said that it's him. But it wasn't him. Maybe look alike. Maybe the witness see it wrong. Maybe he thinks wrong. Maybe at that time he was drunk <laughs> and seeing double. Who knows? Okay. So some prisoner went there, let's uh, say wrongly accused, and even died, you know, have death penalty. That's why uh, some countries, they abolish completely death penalty to avoid this unfortunate, uh, you know, event, unfortunate things happen to innocent people. So he said because of the sound that he became a heart. But you have to listen well, listen, yeah, listen well. He said that the Buddha sound, his wonderful sound, the voice, was both secret and all pervasive. It was through sound. But it's, this is different sound, you see that? All pervasive and secret. How can that be? How can that be secret when the Buddha was preaching? Anybody know the cup is going? Hmm? Nature in Bush. At that? Huh? In the sound? No, no, no. He hear the Buddha sound. He said the Buddha was preaching, you see? Because the Buddha was 
preaching the Four Noble Truths, and he was listening. He heard it, and he understood it. But it was both secret and all-pervasive. You always make me look like a wise person. You always force me to tell you the answer. <laughs> Why is that? Huh? Okay. Since I have no choice, I pretend that I know. All right. <laughs> and you just have to take it because you don't answer me. So you have to take whatever answer I give because that's what I all I knew. Okay. I guess when the Buddha was preaching, because Buddha just came out from enlightenment, you know, with all this energy in him, conserved all these six years and forty days intensive meditation. He just came out. So the whole beings of him is full of blessing, Buddha power, light, and wisdom. Ah, incredible at that time. So these five lucky bhikkhus, you know, practitioner, got it all, <laughs> at least as much as they can absorb at that time. So when the Buddha was preaching, he entered Samadhi then. You understand what I'm saying? He still here, one, one side from the Buddha's worldly voice, but inside he also hear the Buddha in all ten directions then. Because when the Buddha says something, it's not just the humans that hear, the animals hear them, the divas from heaven hear them, the ghosts, all the ones hear them. It's all in the ten direction. It reverberates all over everywhere. And only when you're in Samadhi, you hear it. It's different then. But because he's in Samadhi, so he can hear both half from the Buddha voice physically and the inside, the true Buddha's voice. Therefore, he thinks, okay, that's what enlightenment was. Ah, I was enlightened because I hear the Buddha's voice, which is secret and all pervasive. Secret because he heard it inside and all pervasive, as if only the Buddha was only whispering to him. Because he sees nothing at that time anymore. He hears nothing else. He don't see the other five bhikkhus. He don't see anyone else. He doesn't see anything. Only Buddha and him. Only the Buddha's voice. That's why he say it's secret. But then it's all over, everywhere in the ten direction he can hear, because he opened his ear at that time. You see, the Buddha blessing make it happen like that. Yeah. In the presence of the Buddha, many wonderful things happen. So this is what happened to him, and he thought, "Wow, because the Buddha is preaching, I got enlightenment." You understand now? Yes. Take it or leave it, because you don't have other <laughs> a wiser answer for me. No? All right. Uh, moment. Or maybe I just sit on the table, huh? Yeah, sit on the table. Huh? <laughs> Now I can sit like a Buddha. Oh. Ah, thank you. Okay, so the Buddha asked us about perfect penetration, as I have been certified to it. Sound, voice, yeah? voice, is the superior means for him, for him. Is it? What if you don't have anybody ever talk to you? What if you stay in the jungle? Only animal or birds singing. How would you get enlightenment then? Huh? See? Okay. But the Buddha will tell you later. I, I'm not saying that. No, I'm not saying that. I, oh my God, I forgot. I told the end of the movies. <laughs> oh, but that's just one. There are many more to come. Mm. Okay, so now another bhikkhu. Whoever stay with the Buddha at that time are only bhikkhus. Okay, not bhikkhuni. Bhikkhuni come later. Nuns come later when his mother, the stepmother came and begged him for uh, becoming a nun to follow him. That's when the nuns began. Before, Hindu don't have any nuns because it's inconvenient. They They think, the woman in India cannot go out. 
without any other man or family member, understand? Otherwise, they'd be looked out upon and harassed or molested. It's still nowadays, still nowadays. Uh, less, of course, less, yeah? Less than before, yeah. They're more liberal now. <laughs> but in some remoter area, maybe such custom still prevail. And any woman go alone is, is a no-no in India. Hmm? It's not respectful. So, at that time, whoever stay, even if I don't say it's a monk, you should know it's a monk, okay? Because here it doesn't say a monk, Ubanisat. It just say Ubanisat. Then you should know he's one of the monks. Huh? Whoever stay with Buddha at that time, Buddha don't have house, Buddha don't have food for you, don't have nobody cook for you there. So if you want to stay there, you have to be a monk. Meaning you go out, beg for your own food, take care of yourself. Buddha don't do any physical caring for his monks. Yeah? Everyone take care of themselves. It's easier, okay? Yes. And maybe the lay people come now and then, occasionally or whenever, then they bring food to offer to Buddha also, and then they probably bring their own food or cook for them. But not the Buddha who has to take care of all that. Not like your poor master here. Hmm? Okay, a lot of work because I have to take care of small things, small, small things. Even if the disciple built, I have to instruct and take care you know, that it's done well, for example. Hmm? I'm not complaining, I'm just telling you, your poor master is really poor. <laughs> Every little thing takes time. Don't tell me that, oh, it's just a little job, why must I say that? A lot of little jobs, <laughs> okay? A lot of little jobs, even for dogs, how they have to be comfortable, where, you know, it's a new place, and many things are not, not as ready as in an old place, okay? But I'm very happy, okay? I'm not complaining anything at all. Just a lot of work, hmm? Right, so now there's another Bichu come up, telling the Buddha what method he, he practiced. The first one is the voice, see? The Buddha's voice, okay? Uh, now, Yubanishat arose from his seat, bowed at the Buddha's feet, and said to the Buddha, I also saw the Buddha when he first accomplished the way. Probably these are the first disciples. So they take turn to stand up and tell. First come, first talk. That's why first the Bible, and then now it's Ubanishat, because he's also one of the first. Maybe not together with the five, but maybe second first, you see? So they come one by one. Upanishad say, I also saw the Buddha when he first came out of Samadhi, of the perfect enlightenment accomplishment. I learned to contemplate the appearance of impurity until I grew to loathe it and came to understand that the nature of all form is unclean. Bare bones and subtle dust all return to emptiness, and so both emptiness and form are done away with. With this realization, I accomplish the path beyond learning. The thus come one certify me and named me Upanishad. The object of form came to an end, and wonderful form was both secret and all-pervasive. Thus it was through the appearance of form that I became an Ahat. The Buddha asked us about perfect penetration, as I have been certified to it. Form is the superior means. What means form? Like, you are a form. He is a form. I am in the form of a human. Eh? Or any other thing here has a form, okay? Air doesn't have form. Water maybe don't have. But these or these have form, hmm? okay? And so, these five bishus and this uh, Yubanishad bishu also have been certified by the Buddha. Certified meaning when they told him about their experience, yeah? And the Buddha said, yeah, that's that. You have been in Samadhi. Uh, you are at level of a heart now. Congratulations. Good. 
Buddha first came out of enlightenment, I would also like to be there, <gasps> taking in all this blessing, you understand, power, and I love, you know. <laughs> when Buddha first came out, he's so generous, you <laughs> understand me? Whoever come, take it, take it. And he has no worry about karma or nothing at that time from disciple. But even then, later on, he has karma, because more disciples come, more karma accumulated. And even the Buddha cannot digest it immediately if it keeps repeating and coming in, and not enough time to erase. Just like if you are very dirty, take a few showers, you know, a longer time to clean. If you just sweat a little bit, yeah, just a little soap or even no soap, you rinse it out. When it's accumulating, if you've been working all day in the hot sun, in the dirt, in cement, in the rock and all that, then of course you're more dirty. Hmm? And all day, and not just a few minutes or a few, uh, one hour, two hours, different, huh? same. The Buddha, when he first came out, no problem. By the way, I told you these five first bhikkhu are very bad. <laughs> they were taking Buddha's blood before, many former lives, you remember now, okay? So that doesn't mean they are good or angels or anything. It's still bad karma, yeah, and not very good, yeah? But the Buddha took them in, no problem, he didn't feel nothing. And another one, Upanishad came, also no problem. A few more, a few more, no problem. But in some time later on, normally Buddha don't mention much about his taking karma or anything, or no, not too much mention in, in the sutra. But one time something leaked out, like, because of the disciples' karma, he has no food to eat for three months. He has to take horse feeding, horse food. Just one sentence that we can understand now, leaking out some secret, that the Buddha also took the karma from disciples. And mostly also in the Bible, like Jesus, nobody mentioned that. Jesus also don't say, take karma or anything. He said, come, come to me, you heavy laden. I will, you know, uplift you, quicken you, yeah. But then later, in one or two sentences, they say, because of disciple karma, he has to be crucified. No need to say a lot. Then we know that it's all the time, you know, just one time. If it mentioned one time, that means all the time, often, yeah. So the Buddha, at that time, he just came out powerful, strong, don't have disciple just one or two, or even two dozen, two hundred is a piece of cake <laughs> for him. Later on, two thousand, two hundred thousand, or maybe more, then he crumbled, just for a little bit. <sighs> and because of the disciple that he could not even stay long in the world, he's supposed to stay long forever. But Ananda didn't answer, didn't beg him to stay, didn't say, oh, please stay. So finally, Buddha has to go. Nobody invited him to stay. <laughs> Ananda was blurred and blinded by the karma of all people around him, and the Buddha's uh, disciples' karma as well. See? It's not Ananda alone fault. It's not his fault alone. It is a you know, web that cast on him and make him oblivious to what the Buddha meant. You see, Buddha cannot obviously say to him, Ananda, I'm going to say that I will stay forever, and then you have to invite me, okay? <laughs> Buddha cannot do that. But Ananda is not enlightened enough at that time. It all has to be that way. It's not his fault, okay? Only after the Buddha Nirvana, the Sangha looked down upon him, thinking he's always been living next to the Buddha and, and not enlightened enough, you know, so they kick him out. <laughs> kick him out of the great assembly. Say, you're not worthy to be in here with us. And then kick him out, and he's so sad and shame, and he went to the forest, sit one night only. He became enlightened enough to come back, and later become one of Buddha's successor. Huh? But that was Anan. Uh, don't dream about it, okay? <laughs> Ananda, he was an ancient Buddha also, okay? He just played his role at that time. Somebody has to play some role, okay? 
not like two Buddhas sitting together. <laughs> two Buddhas sit together. But don't think that you are also playing your whatever role, <laughs> like Ananda. Okay, huh? Please. <laughs> so, when the Buddha certified, somebody said, oh, okay, that's level you are a heart. That's why he said that. So form is the superior means. At that time, because of the, the power of the Buddha blessing, so he suddenly realized that all form in this world are impermanent and made of dust only, and then it will return to dust. Yeah. Therefore, he became enlightened at that time. Maybe the Buddha taught him thus, yeah? Because the Buddha also taught this kind of method to some of the Bodhisattva at that time. Yeah. No. So, there's the person now, another Bichu, the pure youth, younger monk, adorned with fragrance. That's probably his name. Okay? Sometimes in India they have <laughs> names like that, yeah? Hmm. Uh, like, uh, remember some, the Buddha name uh, Clear Light? Yeah? It's just a translation of the name. Yeah? It's like my name, the Chinese is Ching Hai, translated to Pure Ocean. Huh? Like that. Mm. Just like your name, maybe Rose, it's a flower. Yeah? Okay. So, the pure youth, one of the pure monks, young, young, adorned with fragrance, his name. Mm arose from his seat, bow at the Buddha's feet. Tradition, I tell you already, Buddha didn't want to do that, Buddha did not ask anybody to do it, but he just let it be, okay? Otherwise, everybody come up and bow, he say, no need, no need. And then everybody else come, no need, no need. He would say, all day, no need, no need, please don't. <laughs> Too much trouble. In my time, it's easier because I talk in the microphone, and people re record it, and you already overheard it. Master said, don't bow to her, don't pay obeisance, don't prostrate, nothing like that. Also, I don't need a lot of hurrah, okay? <laughs> All right, now, I know you love me, that's why you forsake your comfortable home to come here cramping together. And I do know that, huh? All right, you can express yourself sometimes, but not always, okay? No need, we family, okay? If you see your mother coming from work, you clap. <laughs> or if your boss coming to work with you, you clap. <laughs> okay. But even then, I record it in the recording, and we have SMT, tell people, don't need to bow to me. And still, one time, one of Vietnamese or old men, comrade from Vietnam, he wanted to prostrate to me three times. He said, because it's a Vietnamese tradition that when you uh, accept by a master that you respect and believe, you must uh, prostrate three times. And some also bring some gifts, you know, tradition. But I said, no, nobody prostrate to nobody here. <laughs> Don't do it. Because if you prostrate to me, I have to prostrate to you, and I'm too old now. <laughs> My knees doesn't, doesn't like <laughs> too much trouble. So I have to tell him many times, so then he stopped. But he did not even feel very, uh, how you say, happy about it. For him, it would have been better if he prostrate three times. Then his heart, his heart would feel more mm, complete. Fulfilled. More fulfilled, yeah, more contented, yes. I know that, but I cannot let him. He just have to prostrate to, to the Buddha somewhere else, yeah? And prostrate, maybe you can do it at home, you know, private, with privacy, in front of the photo, okay, nobody say anything. Why have to do it in front of the assembly? And if I let him, then everybody want to do that. Why him? <laughs> Why? <laughs> and then everybody come and prostrate, and then we have no time for anything. Look, if I sit here waiting for all of you, come in front of me, prostrate three times. Imagine when it will finish, yeah? and waiting as well, and dusty, and no time for <laughs> Shurangama Sutra, no time for eating, dinner, 
No breakfast, no cleaning the hall, no meditation, nothing. Just frustrating all day long. In queue, <laughs> in queue. <laughs> Understand? Yes. yes, we have respect inside. It's fine. I know you love me. Uh, somehow you do, yeah? yeah. At least uh, most of you. It doesn't matter if you don't love me. I love you. <laughs> That's hundred percent. Okay. Just, just like one man who was very much in love with one girl, but she's not in love with him. The story I told already before, but it's very appropriate here. So the man, he keeps following, you know, he keeps like chasing her some every way, and giving her gifts and stuff like that. And the other friend feels sorry for him. Oh, she doesn't like you. Hmm? She doesn't love you. She doesn't care about you. Why you waste your time? Mm, no, our love is hundred percent. What are you talking about? Men say, who? Who hundred percent? Is you mean she loved you fifty? He said, No, I love her hundred <laughs> percent. My love is enough to cover for both. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What logic? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's so cute. <laughs> All right then. So he said to the Buddha, this uh, this uh, adorned with fragrant <laughs> fragrant adorned. Um, Bishu, tell Buddha that I heard the thirst come one teach me to contemplate attentively all conditioned appearances. After I heard thus from the Buddha's instruction, I sat in repose in the quiet of a pure dwelling, just like you sit, you know, in your corner at home meditation. I sit in a quiet corner of a pure dwelling, when I saw the big shoe light sinking incense, the fragrant scent quietly entered my nostrils. I contemplated this fragrance. It did not come from the wood, it did not come from the emptiness, it did not come from the smoke, and it did not come from the fire. There was no place where it came from, and no place it went to. Because of this, my discriminating mind was dispelled, and I attained the absence of outflows. The thirst come one certified me, and called me adorned with fragrance, according to his experience, yeah? Defiling scent suddenly vanished, and wonderful fragrance was both secret and all-pervasive. Again, it was through the adornment of fragrance that I became an Ahat. So, the fragrance awakened him. But this is different. It's not like you sit here, I put an incense next to your nose, and you became an Ahab. I wish I could. Then I would buy all of the incense in the whole world and put a bunch in front of your nose. <laughs> then we are done with, and I don't have to come here. Yeah? <laughs> and I will go buy incense and put on everybody's nose I can outside in the world. Then we all enlightened. So, <laughs> is that easy? In this time of Dharma ending age, you are brainwashed. <laughs> okay. That is after he met the Buddha, I mean, one of the first disciples here. Buddha is still strong, yeah, young, full of power, yeah, newly enlightened. Mm. Of course, he's newly enlightened, meaning he newly reclaimed his position as a Buddha. Otherwise, he has been Buddha long before we even know <laughs> what the name of the tree. <laughs> I even know this word, nothing. Not long before this universe or this earth has been even formed. Eons, eons already. So now, when Buddha talked to him, instructed him to contemplate on the uh, conditioned appearances, just any appearance. You know, the Buddha taught him different methods. At that time, and in any time, 
I'm telling you, most masters don't teach you immediately the uh, Kuan Yin method. Have to first purify you, like Mila Reba. His master make him work and work and work from one house to another, saying, there, yeah, not good enough, make another one over there. <laughs> and then over there, oh, no, 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 no good, no good. Take it, make it over there. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, also, same with many Indian masters before, they teach you something else first. So, like that. So, the Buddha taught this Bichu when he first came. When he first came, he wasn't even monk, yeah? Maybe just the lay people and who want to follow him, then they became monk later on. Because if they want to stay with the Buddha, they have to take care of themselves, you know? They cannot just uh, rely on the Buddha to go shopping, <laughs> go for shopping for them or cooking for them, yeah? Or make money, buy food for them. No, cannot, huh? Okay. So after he heard this, the Buddha tell him to to concentrate, you know, in meditation and condition form. Condition form means it will be born and then it will die, just like our life is conditioned like that. Uh, Sometimes the teacher, some teacher, or maybe Buddha at that time also, t teach you to con contemplate on the light, yeah, one light, like the flame of the candle. Okay. When I saw the big huge light sinking incense, the fragrant, you know, that's why he he attained the absence of our flows, mean he's purified, yeah, good. No more mundane thought will come from his mind or enter his mind. Understand? Mm. No obstruction. The Buddha certify him and call him adorned with fragrance. And then any defiling scent suddenly vanished, and wonderful fragrance were both secret and all pervasive. You see, this is different, different type of fragrance that he, that he smelled. He saw the bishu, or the bishu were lighting incense. Some incense were sinking, maybe heartbroken already, and no more, uh, no more uh, flame, no more burning. So some bishu, some monks, that take turn, probably on duty. They come and light this incense again. Sinking means no more. You see the, the incense words <laughs> like falling down, the ash are falling, no, no more uh, burning. So some bishu lighting it. And then at that time he happened to be nearby and he saw it and then he smelled the incense. But it was both secret and all pervasive, meaning he saw it outside, he smelled it from his nose, but then he can feel the whole universe, the whole earth was filled with the fragrance, that's why it's all pervasive, yes. And then he attained a heart, frank. So the Buddha asked about perfect penetration. As I have been certified to it, the adornment of fragrance is the, the superior mean for him, it's a superior means. Okay? For him, of course. So now this is the third superior means that already we have heard. Okay? All of them, all three groups, has attained a heart, purification, uh, samadhi. Of course, at that time when he smelled that incense, he already entered samadhi due to the Buddha blessing, because Buddha just instructed him to go meditate. Buddha blessing went with him not just instruction by mouth, but the Buddha says something to you, bless you, yeah? So he went and he entered Samadhi, but he still can smell the incense from his own nose. But yet he see, he feel the incense is filled all over the ten direction. That's why he feel it's secret, private for him only, but also everywhere, because he's already lifted up, he's already lifted up. I tell you, these things are true, you know. It's true like that. You can see outside and inside at the same time. You can be outside here and inside at the same time. And when you come, come down halfway, then you might still see some flashing light, you know, like sometimes when you sleep, something suddenly wake you up and the light is still flashing when you're back into your body. But then it's gone, of course, yeah? This thing like that happened. And it happened to me also. Today I just told the kids some, my own story, you know. I see things, but it's not there. 
like I see a beautiful sofa, which I imagine it should be, and then it wasn't. <laughs> it wasn't that sofa. It was an ugly self sofa that I did not like. <laughs> and I saw the whole Taiwan become like European. But it wasn't. I was in Taiwan. I even call everybody to ask, am I in Taiwan or am I in Europe? And they all certify me <laughs> that I am in Taiwan. <laughs> Master, you are in Taiwan, and we are in Shihu now. <laughs> After the third certification, <laughs> I know. <laughs> okay, and then I saw the sofa, which is not the sofa. I stand in front of it and praise it. Oh, this is a sofa that you should buy. This is good. You, this is the sofa I wanted you to have. Wonderful, wonderful. And later I said, please buy me another sofa like that. They bought me the same old style that I already did not like. I said, Master, but you ordered us to buy the same sofa. I said, the same, the white one, the beautiful one that I praise in front of you. They said, yeah, we heard you praising the sofa, but we did not know why, because you, you told us you don't like the sofa <laughs> before. <laughs> and all the whole Sihu, none have this sofa anywhere. And none even in any catalog that we saw. Okay, so later I give up, I just accept the whatever ugly sofa that I did not like before because it keep moving, and then they will buy me another ugly sofa anyway, so I said, oh, never mind, it's only for dogs and me, fine. And then I told the kids also that, I, you know, sometimes they buy me juice in a plastic bottle, and they give me just like that, yeah, and then before I leave somewhere, there's no filter water, so I just drink the juice. Sometimes in the kitchen, they bring me some, you know, sometimes one bottle, two bottles, and I drink it, in order to use a bottle. <laughs> so I save about six bottles mm. to wash my hand, or to dampen the cloth sometimes, to wipe something. Yeah, so I don't have to go out in the rain to get the water. So and I have a six small, small bottle, <laughs> small like this, <laughs> six of them, I'll put it there next to a, a bucket yeah, so that I can wash my hand or rinse the towel in it when I don't want to go out to get water. I always have some water inside. Also very convenient, sometimes the water they cut off because they often have to repair water pipe and stuff here. So I always have some water in case, you know? I feel I'm very smart, you know? And whenever I use it until only one bottle left or none left, then I bring them all outside and fill in and bring it back in. And I put some in pockets some under my arm and bring them all in together, six bottles. And one day, <laughs> okay, same, usual. I always put the bottle in front of whatever empty, I put right in front of the door, you know, behind the door. Before I open the door, you see it right in front of it. But the door has two panels, you know. Once I, I fix it with the latch so that you don't have to always open. Because if you don't fix one at least, then the wind will blow boom, boom, boom. Even if you lock, it still go plak, plak. So I put the six five or six bottles, five bottles in front of that latched door part. The other part can always open the latch and go in. And now one part enough for me, I'm always small. No need two or both open. <laughs> they make it two in case you bring furniture in, but I don't have any furniture. I have only a step, step and one step and two step. You can use that as a chair. And also as a step higher to fix some curtain or something. That's enough, okay? I don't have table because in the cave already have some stone structure with the high. You can use it at the table. What for? I have a lot of things and I have to dust all the time. You know, I'm lazy, working too much already. And then I put the bottle there, five of them together. Hmm? Put right next to the door. So when I come out, I will take them together. I won't forget. See, I don't have to come back in again. Let the bottom come out. Whenever bottle empty, I put right there. So the door is like this. Okay. This is my inside house, okay? Inside. This is the door. And when I want to open, I open like this. Got that? And this side fix. This side open when I want to. Or I, otherwise, I lock them together. Understand? I lock them. Do feel safe, yeah? I lock double. <laughs> double chain and another lock. So that's, it's equal to three locks, okay? At night, yeah. And whenever I'm inside. When I'm outside, I don't care. Lock or not lock doesn't matter. But when I'm inside, I lock three times, okay? Okay, so now 
I put the bottle here. You see what I mean? Right next to this uh, fixed uh, door uh, panel. And then whenever I get out, I just take them, put in the pocket or put in a bucket and get out together. Yeah? Throw away the dirty water that I wash or something. I use for mopping or anything or wiping thing. And then take the clean water to the bottle to come in. That day, I put already four bottles together there, and I saw it, I know it. When I want to bring it out, I saw only one bottle and the bucket, nothing else there. And it's funny, I just put it full there, just now. And then I went in just to answer the phone or do something, come back out, nothing, only one bottle, one small bottle. I said, where are the other? And I feel myself, my God, you're getting too old. Too old woman, you forget everything. And I really don't have. There's nothing at the door so that hidden. No furniture. It's just always the foot there in front of the door, you know? You cannot not see it. And it's a routine job. It's not like the first time I forgot. No, nothing. Only one bottle. So I said, okay. I went back to the other area, look, nothing, nowhere, because the cave is mostly empty. It's nothing hidden anywhere that they cannot find. Four bottle missing. I said, I must be <laughs> cracking up, you know, old, because nowhere else can find. And outside the sink, nothing, nowhere, outside, inside, nowhere. So I feel very confused and sad. I took one bottle and bucket, go out, do it, fill one bottle. I said, okay, I don't need you for one enough. <laughs> Just more trip, okay? All right. And I put the bottle in, put the bucket where it was already, and then I went back to do some work, paperwork, as usual. And then later I had to go out through the door again. I saw four bottles right there. One, two, three, four. It's like army, you know, I put one, two, three, four. I said, huh? What happened? It's right there. I could not understand it. And I had to check with, <laughs> with the wise guys. And I said, what happened? Did you hide it or what's wrong with my eyes? Something wrong? They said, no, your souls had not completely come back from the high, too high. That's why you didn't see it. You see only half. I said, ah, uh -huh, uh -huh. ah, <laughs> ah, ah. Okay, same with the sofa, <laughs> same with the Europeanized Taiwan. Yeah, it happened like that. Oh, why I told you this? Something a fragrant, yeah. Just like both secretive and all pervasive. It's like that. When your soul is not completely there, not completely in the physical world, yeah, but some is still lingering there. You're not completely up but you're not completely here, yeah. So it happened to me several times, you know, more than several times, but some other time I probably didn't notice, you know, I thought, oh, maybe I forgotten. But the bottle, you cannot forget, because this is often, this is a thing I do every two, three days, you know, when the water, almost like every day, I put right there. And even if I forgot, I have not put it there, then why I found them there, <laughs> just, just a few minutes later. You cannot not see it. It's an empty door, nothing there. And it's a green color, so the whitish bottle will be standing out. You can't miss it. The thing is a routine also, every day. I mean, I do it ever since, <laughs> long time, you know, so it's, you cannot say, I forget or I don't see. How can I not see the four bottles standing there? I was really go back and forth, keep looking. I go back to that place again. Really don't have. And I went out, fill the bottle, come back in with the bucket. Also don't have it. Not there. And then I go work, go back to the world, you know. <laughs> I comment in this and there, some, in, some work on the computer, and then I probably got myself back together. And when I have to go out again, I saw them right there, like an army, and like one, two, three, four. Very neat and tidy, telling you both secret and all pervasive. <laughs> <laughs> so this person threw fragrance, you know, he thought, yeah. So he told the Buddha that the adornment, you know, the smell, the essence of the fragrance, fragrance in any way, yeah. 
is the superior means. All right. Next one, the two Dharma princes. They call them two Dharma princes, probably because they were princes from other country, or from smaller kingdom, or from just one of those small kingdoms somewhere. There were two Dharma princes, two princes, males. One is physician king, and the other superior physician, and five hundred Brahma gods in the assembly arose from their seats, bow at the Buddha's feet, and said to the Buddha, From beginningless cowpaths until now, we have been good doctors for the world. They are physicians, they are real physicians, so they call them physician king and superior physician. Maybe they were very good, you know, have green thumb. <laughs> good healers, they call them uh, king of physician, and physician superior is probably the name people gave it to them because they are so good, good doctors. So they say, from beginning to end is a time we have always been doctors. Maybe that's why they are good. See, whatever you've been doing in previous lives time, and if you do it again in this lifetime, you're always better, always better. Hmm? That's why many genius musicians, you know, since young age, or genius doctors, genius uh, scientists, very young, ten years something, already enter university, learning, arguing with professors, because they have been doing it before, and they still retain the memories of their expertise from a life. They know their past, yeah. In our mouths, the, the two physicians talking together with the 500 Brahma gods. I don't know why they call it in the Brahma gods. Probably they attain the level of Brahma. Hmm? Or maybe they're really the Brahma gods from Brahma heavens to come down. And other Bishu at the time can see it, the Buddha can see it, but maybe other lay people don't see it. We'll see how they go. I read it a long time ago, I forgot. <laughs> I just check it up quickly before I came to, to read to you, I mean, a few, some days ago, because I have to read it before and no? see if it's okay for you. Hmm? Yeah. So that I also remember how I understood it, and then I can explain it to you. So it's double work. Uh, when I read this quicker, of course, I have no calendar with me at that time. <laughs> but in front of you, <laughs> the calendar just suddenly appeared, <laughs> you see, <laughs> by itself. Mm. You inspired me. <laughs> I don't need all this explanation. I just understood. No need explanation. It's direct and simple. So these two Dharma princes say, from the beginningless Kaupas until now, I mean, there's life and lives and lives after life, they have been medicine men. That's why they're good now, though they, they bestow the, the title upon them physician king and superior physician. The patients did that, and they became famous by that name. So in the assembly, they also call them like that. That's how our names, many names in the world begin, you know? That's why you say Mr. Smith. <laughs> Before probably there was no name and he is a Smith. So they just say, oh, that's the Smith family. Uh, or what's the name, what else? Mr. Porter. A Porter, yes, yes, yes. For example, yeah, okay, right. So these uh, two physicians have been bestowed a good, good title, just like that. And the 500 Brahma gods, that doesn't exactly mean 500. You know already, right? In India at that time, either 500 or 2,000, <laughs> yeah? Or 84,000, yeah? Or 84, or 18. they just like a, a rough figure. When it's a lot, they say it's 500. So you hear a lot many times in Buddhist story, 500 this, 500 that, 500 even robbers, remember? <laughs> okay. And uh, uh, Krishna has 500 uh, hurt hurt girls, you know? And Buddha has 500 concubines. And he doesn't have 500 concubines. What do he do? What does he do with the 500 concubines? You cannot even manage five women, <laughs> however tough you are. 
Okay? Poor prince, poor Buddha, if he really had five hundred. Imagine just five and they quarrel with each other and <laughs> compete, yeah? And vie for attention, competing, quarreling. How, how can any man even live in such a situation? Huh? From this kind of atmosphere, I advise you, never wish to become any king. Don't, okay? Don't. <laughs> just don't. It just looks good. It's not good. Or even president nowadays. Uh, that's why they don't vote a president forever. Four years, five years. Understand? Very wise. Too much work, yeah? I, I wouldn't want to. You see, even with among practitioner, I want to be alone. <laughs> even with you, such the best already, huh? In the world, in my opinion, it's still I need to be alone. I cannot be too long. It's okay. I come out see you now and then when I organize a time for you, but not to need to clean my house. Nothing. I live in a cave, which is very good. It doesn't look perfect and clean, so I don't have to always keep it perfect and clean. It's a very good, like mud house style, you know, inside is mud. It's not wet mud, it's just like dry. So why worry cleaning every day? It's dusty, it's dust, dirt anyway. Very convenient, I like it. I suit my busy lifestyle very well. <laughs> it's not like I'm attached to it, okay? I'm just happy that I found it. If, if I don't have it, if I have to live in a house, I will, okay? And I will act accordingly. But I'm just happy that I don't have to worry so much dusting, polishing the furniture, you know, wiping the bathroom walls, nothing. No. They make me a very temporary kind of, uh, you know, construction kind of uh, bathroom. Plastic or, or, or maybe metal painted on it, I don't know. After I bath, I just use hot water to sprinkle all over. <laughs> I spray some vinegar or some soap, and then I spray the hot water, because it's very small, just enough one person. I spray also my toilet and also rinse it with boiling water. You know boiling water I already have in the bathroom? Clean, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> no need to do a lot of work. <laughs> if I have to do more work, I don't think I can sit here, truly. We have only 24 hours. I'm not getting any younger either. Okay, so the two doctors, King, continue saying, in our mouths, we have tasted many herbs, wood, metals, and stones of the Saha world, I mean, of our physical world. Saha is a name in Sanskrit terms for our world, okay? They don't translate it, just as Saha world because all the Buddhists understand that. Just like Samadhi, you all understand. So sometimes I say Samadhi, I don't translate it. So 108,000 flavors. Oh, it's a change here. 108, not 84,000, not 2,000. 108,000 flavors. We know in detail, bitter, sour, salty, bland, sweet and pungent flavors and the like, in all their combinations and inherent changes. We have a true our knowledge of whether they be cooling or warming, poisonous or non-poisonous, meaning they have to know all the healing property and the uh, uh, contradicting properties of all the herbs, the wood, the stone, whatever they use to combine to heal people. Okay? This is truly... Nah. You know, an, a, a glimpse into a physician's world. In the old time, they don't test it on animals. They don't have that many, they cannot catch all the animals to test it. Nowadays, we're so cruel, we test it all on animals. Luckily, it's getting less and less now, all the way. My heart just cannot bear if I think about it. It's just wrenching me, you know? Okay, so the doctors in the old time, in our physical world, have to taste the thing themselves. Sometimes they know it's poison, but they have to still administer first on themselves, bit by bit, and sometimes they get poisoned. Yeah, sometimes they can cure themselves, sometimes not. But they have to administer on themselves first, taste it first, before they can, uh, you know, 
prescribe it to patients or try it on patients. These are the true doctors of the old time. They have to go and harvest the herbs and pick the stone, those stones with mineral property, healing property, and the wood, yeah, whatever. They have to do it all themselves. Or maybe just a few assistants. If the doctor are more famous, they have probably more disciples, and they help him also. But not like nowadays, no? not so easy. And they have to taste all that to see whether or not they heal them. First they put poison or something that makes the patient ill, and then they try the medicine, see how much, in order to heal them. They think this may heal, but they're not for sure, you see. They're doctors, physical, they don't, they're not like uh, gods or something, so they have to try it, you see. Try until it, they heal themselves. First they have to get sick or get poisoned, and then they heal themselves. Sometimes they overdose because they don't know how much, sometimes mistake, and maybe they die or gravely ill. This is a true fate of physicians. So we nowadays take all the doctors for granted. But they are also very, working very hard. You understand? They mingle among sick people, infectious patients, day in, day out. Sometimes got infected themselves. See? So these two princes, uh, physicians, continue talking. While serving the thirst come one, we came to know that the nature of flavors is not empty and is not existent. Not empty, not existent. Nor is it the body or mind. Nor is it apart from body and mind. We became enlightened by discriminating among flavors. Uh, they they concentrated, you know, not like you discriminate by <laughs> by your taste and then you enlighten. If it's so good, I go pick all the herbs, <laughs> give you <laughs> two different herbs, and you discriminate between them. Oh, this is peppermint, <laughs> this is basilicum, and you be enlightened. It's not like that, okay? Otherwise, I can do that. Yeah, it's not. Who knows why? Just discriminating between the herbs flavor, they became enlightened. Who knows why? I'm not be giving you a cup because, okay, you just have to learn. Why? So that they don't get contaminated between each other? They're not contaminated? Yeah. Anyone else? No cup, just your wisdom I want. Yeah. Because it took their concentration to like, know the herbs? I mean the concentration to discriminate? Yes. Yeah, that's one point, yes. They know truly how to distinguish between two herbs. Mm -hmm. Okay, next one. Mm. Okay, you force me again, huh? <laughs> Dig it out for me, huh? Okay, I pretend again that I know something. Buddha's blessing. Mm. You're next to the Buddha, yeah? Somehow you get <laughs> help from him invisibly even if Buddha did not proclaim that. If you're next to somebody who shower, you know, some water will sprinkle on you. If you go in a perfume shop, somebody spray perfume on this person, you're next to it, you also get a few drops, and you also smell something. Huh? They follow the Buddha wholeheartedly. At that time, they even forsake their own jobs and fame and power over the patients and the world outside, family, and I think they became monks. Huh? They believe so much in the Buddha, they love the Buddha so much, they want to be with him, to learn from him, and then to help the world in a larger scale, not just by medicine. So they are so pure already, all of them here. They're not normal monks, they're Buddha's monks. They're next to his house every day is monks. They talk to him every day as monks. They listen to the Buddhas every day as monks. Yeah? They're begging for food only monks. They have only two, three robes, monks. They have no house, no wife, no kids, no nothing, monks. Hmm? They are with the enlightened master monks. <laughs> okay? Right. So now, because of that, not because of the herb discrimination, you sidetrack by their profession. 
Yeah? Just like the magician, you know, they do some hula hula up and you keep looking at their movement. You don't know the other thing they're doing. They distract you by one movement, while the other hand, the other movement secretly, they do something to show you something. Yeah? Because you're distracted. You don't see where you should see. You just think, oh, medicine man, of course, the medicine, the herb. So we have to concentrate. Nah, you see that? Yeah. Ah. Got you. <laughs> got them, got them. <laughs> yeah, distraction is our problem. <laughs> yeah. So it's not easy, huh? But of course, you pretend you don't know, so that I pretend I know. You only want to give me all the <laughs> credit, and I thank you for that. Mm. Good, good people. Good heart. <laughs> so good. <laughs> yeah, very charitable. Yeah? They don't want me to lose face, you know? So they say, oh, well, we don't know. Just talk nonsense. So that master say something. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> anyway, you just want to keep me here. That's what it is. Longer calendar. Uh, so that I can sit here all the time, be your bodyguard, babysitter. Yeah? So, you see that? All right. Mm. Ah, so, they were serving the thirst come one, you see, that's when they know the flavor is not empty, and not existent, not this, not that, neither that. They were serving the thirst come one at that time. Yeah, giving him medicine or maybe some checking out, you know, the body, is anything good? Maybe just a, a general checkup. Or maybe Buddha has some pain at that time, or some coldness, or something. And they were serving him. Huh, know that, okay? It's not a normal, like they just sit there and smell in the herb. Oh, enlightened! <laughs> wow, so cheap? No, they were with the, ser uh, the Buddha and they were serving him even. Meaning taking care of him, physically, personally, closely. Yeah, maybe touching here, touching there. And at the same time, maybe just soon out by the Buddha's blessing. Meanwhile, we're half, halfway still the hand still touching or making medicine, but the soul went up. Huh? Therefore, all pervasive huh? and secret at the same time. Just like I see only one bottle and the other four, I don't see. Huh? Truly personal experience. How can you not see? If you see one bottle, then you see the other four. <laughs> because they're together. Understand then? And if I didn't put it there, how come I return? They are there. Yeah, and same with the sofa or Taiwan, become Europe. I call three people, our disciples, they all know it. I'm in Europe, still in Europe. No, Master, you in Taiwan. Si Hu, Master, Si Hu. <laughs> three persons confirm with me. And then slowly it fades off, you know, and then I, I recognize the same thing again, the same Si Hu. But it wasn't the same to me before that. And I was working in my office. It's not like I sit in meditation, nothing to do, dreaming about Europe, uh, reminiscing about Europe, miss Europe, nostalgic about it. No, I was busy working on my desk and looking out the window and said, huh? Where am I? You know, <laughs> like Europe, not, not, not the sea that I knew. I know my place. I've been there many years. How can I not? Uh, recognize my own office and my place outside, you know, same trees, same yard. Even if we change the trees, nothing changed. Maybe the tree grow bigger now than 10 years before, but it's still same surrounding, you know. I walk in, walk out every day for years. How can I not know? <laughs> now you know that, okay? So, because of that, I Otherwise, I would not understand what they mean here, or how come secret and pervasive at the same time. It is like that. It's truly, what's saying in here is the truth. It's not fairy tale, nothing. It's very simple, logical. You can be in two worlds at the same time. Many worlds and physical worlds at the same time. And that is for sure. So therefore, he, they were serving the first come one. You see, they were checking out on the Buddha, uh, administer medicine, or checking out on his health, okay? And of course, you're so near to the Buddha, huh? Yeah, what would you get? Huh? <laughs> yeah? <laughs> All right, so simple, right? 
because normally they have been tasting herbs for eons already. They say cow pass already. I mean, thousands, millions of years they've been physicians, tasting all kinds of herbs already. It's not the first time. So when they were tasting or checking out the herbs for the Buddha, only at that time they suddenly realized, oh, uh, not the same, huh? It not come from this, and not come from that, and not from here, not from there either. Suddenly they realize that, how can? Thousands of cow bars passed already, only now they realize it. So it cannot be that they <laughs> concentrate on the medicine or herbs, nada. Mm. You have to listen, okay? One, two words difference, make a big difference of the meaning. Right. So the first come one sealed and certified us brothers and named us as Bodhisattva Physician King and Superior Physician. Of course, they are superior now. They are not just tasting the herbs, but they know the empty nature, the, the illusion of nature, of anything, including the herbs and the medicine. Yeah? They know the illusion, nature of our world. That's what it is. So the Buddha says, ah, of course, this is a superior physician. Not normal, not just knowing the herbs, but knowing the true nature of herbs and all things. We should really thank the past masters, monks and nuns and scholars who have taken time to record the Buddha's teaching after the masters and nirvana, and also for the past and present persons, lay or monks or nuns who have really dedicated themselves, sacrificed their time, and precious health or under any difficult situation to translate this so that I can read it to you. We have to thank them. And may they be blessed forever by all the Buddhas, past, present and future. May their merit be immense, may they be liberated forever. Thank you. Wow. Ah, that's very good that I can relax a little bit among you. Mm. I feel all of you who came today are very good. Yeah, I feel that way, and I was very happy, very, very happy. Because sometimes some a few worms, you know, rot the apples, <laughs> and I don't like that. I never like that. It's the ruin the atmosphere for everybody else, you know, for most people, and I don't like that. I do forgive. I forgive all the time, immediately. Forgiving and uh, having around is different, okay? I told you already, I can forgive the mosquito who bites me, but I don't go and look for mosquito and, and pat his head or hug him and say, Oh, I forgive you! <laughs> yeah? And if a snake bites you, okay, you run to see the doctor quick. Don't stay here and pet him and, oh, snake, you okay? You also have Buddha nature. I forgive you. <laughs> oh, if the tiger there, you run, okay? <laughs> if he bites you already, especially, you run. You don't stay there. Oh, tiger, I forgive you. Oh, you already run, go get doctor, already heal yourself. Don't go and look for the tiger. Against. Oh, you know, a few days ago, you bit me. I forgive you. Come have a hug. <laughs> Are you hungry still? <laughs> yeah. Okay? <laughs> yeah. Forgive. What? As Jesus you turn the other cheek. The cheek is okay, but not the tiger. Not the tiger fang. Huh? Turn the other cheek, okay, another day, but not the tiger fang, and not go look for another person who beat you the other day. Say, Here, here's another cheek, brother. You forgot. <laughs> you forgive is okay, yeah, but don't go and, and show another cheek and say, You forgot the other cheek. <laughs> uh, and tell him, You know, Jesus say, If you beat me once, Slap in one cheek, I have to give you another here. <laughs> here it is. I'm a follower of Jesus. Go slap me another cheek. Uh, yeah. You must have compassion and wisdom. 
both, not just compassion, okay? Wisdom is important. I told you many stories, huh? Yeah? One snake, you know, follow a teacher, become, to become enlightened. They all can, huh? The animals, they also can preach to you even. Any animal's kingdom, they have one teacher, hmm? and they listen to that teacher in their level, okay? So they, they also are enlightened in their way, okay? Maybe four level or third level teacher, but they have a teacher. All animals, group have, okay? Or kingdom have. A uh, race, you know, animal race, they have one. So I told you many stories, you know, there was one, one poisonous snake, you know, and he followed a teacher, so he didn't bite anymore, he became good and quiet. But one day the teacher came back and saw him beaten, black and blue, half dead. The teacher said, what happened to you? The snake said, oh, the, the children, they came and they swing me around and beat me up and throw me on the rock and all that, so I became like this. So the teacher said, oh, why did you do anything? You told me I should not be violent, <laughs> I should not bite. Then the teacher said, I told you not to bite, but I didn't say to you not to hiss. <laughs> You don't have to be violent, eh? you don't have to be angry, but you can react uh, accordingly, okay? Mm. So that people also leave you alone. Mm? Otherwise, these people also create karma if they harass you for no reason. Eh? Mm? Defense, self-defense have many ways, eh? doesn't have to be violent, no? Okay? But have to defend yourself. Like, okay, I'm a practitioner, okay? But I lock my house. Why do I have to have God in front of my house? One more person <laughs> working. I just lock, okay? <laughs> they don't say, Master, why are you scared of you? I'm not scared. I just take care of myself, okay? So you don't worry, so that nothing can happen, even if it never happened. Prevention is always good. Don't tempt people. Don't leave your money all over the place and, and tell people, money is laying all over my house, you know. I know you're honest, I don't care. <laughs> How you know? Okay? Why tempt people? Understand? Yeah. Also the same with the clothing. That's why you should wear, you know, more decent clothes, yeah? Not too tight trousers to come in here. And showing everything that you got. <laughs> they don't come here to see what you got. Yeah? Try just to wear more decent clothes. Maybe buy some tunic when you come here, okay? Loose clothes, more comfortable to meditate. I know you used to wearing, you know, tight things at home. It's easy, convenient to work at home. I know that. Buy a couple of tunic, okay? Like cover up to the knees or something like that. Loose, yeah? Not tight, airy, easy to meditate, cool, okay? Not sweaty. It's not obligation, it's just an advice. It's better for you, okay? Nowadays, many uh, women wearing things is too, too poorly, no? Not that they don't have money, <laughs> they just wear it poorly. <laughs> if you want people to respect you, respect yourself first. Understand? Hmm? If you want people to like, uh, how's the hands off you? <laughs> you prevent it, huh? Okay? Uh, because sometimes I see some, like, girl, young girls, they don't understand much, they like to go with the fashion. They wear clothes almost like nothing, okay? And it's winter. Up here is all open door, <laughs> freedom. <laughs> Down here from almost at the hip, below, also freedom. It's very good, very good to have freedom. But freedom means also responsibility. Take care of yourself so that you are safe. Hmm? You're safe. Uh, it may be good looking according to your opinion, but it may be also meaning something else for the, the men or even uh, for other women. <laughs> women are not all women. Huh? Hmm. Yeah, just like men are not all men. Yeah. It's not their fault, it's just, just their karma like that, hmm? their karma. 
And they've been born like that, they've been programmed like that. Huh? Okay. I think we should go, huh? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, yeah. Master. I'm going now. Within 20 minutes, because the bacteria will be there, hmm? within 20 minutes after eating, anything should brush your teeth. Hmm? Or if you don't have, quickly then rinse as much as you can, floss. Hmm? Good night then, love you. I appreciate your attention and <laughs> And you are really trying very hard. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm not sure if I can try as hard as you, if I am you, okay? Thank you. Thank you. Mm. See you. <laughs> yeah, all of you. Love, <laughs> all of you. <laughs> God bless. Buddha bless.